nightfall. Here, in the city, we have the comfort of light all around. Right this minute, all across our land, our rhinos, who we know have poor eyesight, and the rangers who protect them are about to go into 12 hours of darkness. Unmanned aerial vehicles or drones may provide help for our anti-poaching units at night, but this technology has been met with some criticism. And I take a look at the pros and cons of drones in this week's Rhino Brief. A drone is a powered aerial vehicle that does not carry a human operator, can be expendable or recoverable, and can carry a lethal or non-lethal payload. Drones were first used by the military in the 1960s and 70s. Stills cameras were mounted on them, but the results only came in when the vehicle returned to base. So when the US military started using its Predator drones in the late 1990s, they connected them to the global telecommunications system, which changed things dramatically. Unmanned vehicles could now be remotely controlled and could give live feedback from anywhere in the world. It wasn't long before this technology made its way into our civilian world. Many companies using the technology tried unsuccessfully to rebrand the word drone in an effort to lose the negative military connection. But in South Africa, it seems the word drone has stuck. With an estimated three rhinos being killed in Kruger daily, as well as the enormous area Kruger's Special Rangers, Air Wing and K-9 unit cover, Sand Parks recently announced it was testing drones in the park. Drones were flown for a few experimental hours, about 20 hours at the beginning of 2013 in the park by a local industry, Denel. And since then, just every time you pick up a magazine or go into, onto a site, it says drones like in Kruger Park. We don't have those. We've never operated them. We are careful not to say that we don't want them. We cannot say that. We're in trouble. We need solutions. And something in the air probably will do it for us. And that is why we are grateful that the Peace Park Foundation with donor money has taken the step so that we could come to a point where we say, let's take one year, and after that year, you make good decisions. It's not about getting the thing fly. Yes, it's got to fly as well and be reliable and robust enough. It's what is underneath there. It's the functionality. What can it see, sense, how can it look? That is what we're interested in, and that's what we're working towards. It's understandable that using drones in a massive area like Kruger is difficult. And with Sand Parks testing at least 10 different drones over this year evaluation period, the right application will hopefully be found. In small reserves, anti-poaching units are using drones in a number of ways. Even world-famous poaching survivor Tandi has her own drone team. A couple of months ago when Tandi gave birth, she would hide away in the thickets and it was nice to send up the quadcopter, get an aerial view of her and make sure that the calf and, and Tandi were still fine. So there, there's quite a few applications. Checking fence lines. Sometimes you can't get to fence lines, especially in this terrain, lots of hills, lots of thicket. Send it up and, and monitor fence lines. Even though drones are currently illegal in South Africa, private reserves are able to fly them in non-commercial airspace below 150 feet on their own land. Current legislation is pending to allow drones to be flown legally, especially for conservation efforts. One thing is clear. Technology constantly evolves. And even though it's early days, drone technology may just provide that edge that we need in the poaching crisis. So, kudos to the men and women who keep trying to get a step ahead. And from a private area, coming to you via a drone, that's your rhino brief.